Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the energies for the pi conjugated system of cyclobutadiene using the simple Huckel theory. Since we've gone in great detail to all the steps of the system for ethylene and for cyclopropenyl cation, in this video, we're going to move through the elementary steps more quickly to look at some of the more complicated uh, issues that arise in this particular system. So we'll notice one thing to uh, remind ourselves is that in this particular cyclic system, one is bound to two, two is bound to three, three is bound to four, four is bound to one, but one and three are not bound and two and four are not connected. So therefore, again, using the, uh, the rules of the Huckel theory, we can write down a secular determinant where we have alpha minus the energy along the diagonal. So we can write that down immediately. And we're going to have a four by four determinant. This determinant, we're going to set equal to zero. And we notice that we can figure out the interactions by looking at the appropriate row and column. So the interaction of the first and second atoms will be at the first row, second column, and the second row, first column. So this interaction between one and two, since they're connected, will be beta. Between two and three will be beta. So here we have the third row, second column, and the second column, third row. And similarly, between three and four, looking at the third row, fourth column, and here we have the fourth row, third column. So those are also going to be betas. But we also have to include the fact that four is connected to one. So here we have the first row, fourth column. That's also going to be a connected, so we need a beta for the resonance integral there. And for the fourth row, first column, we also need a beta. At the other positions, between uh, one and three, for example, three and one, and between two and four, those are not connected. So the appropriate value for the resonance integral in those cases is going to be zero. Now, next, we're going to use our trick and we're going to divide through by beta in each case and let x equal alpha minus the energy divided by beta. And this will allow us to rewrite the secular determinant in an easier form. So we can write it down this way, x, one, zero, one, one, x, one, zero, zero, one, x, one, and one, zero, one, x. Is that equal to zero? Now, once we have a four by four determinant, we have to use the same sorts of techniques that we used for three by three determinants. Namely, we have to use the system of expansion by minors. But since we have a four by four matrix, effectively we go down either the uh, row or column. Typically I go by columns because it's more consistent for me. But if we have a choice, we take the uh, set that works easier for us. So I like to go down the, the columns. And in each step, since what's left after we take out the coefficient and we take out its row and column, we'll be left with a series at first of three by three determinants. So to go from four by four, we have to first go break it down into a series of three by threes. And then we have to break each of the three by threes down into a series of two by twos. So we'll show how to do that. So our first coefficient here is going to be x. And then we're left with, we take out the first column and the first row, and we see the three by three uh, determinant that's left over once we do that. And then, so we write that out. So we have x1, zero, one, x1, and zero, one, x. What is our Second coefficient, well, we started with x, so now we go down to one. 
And recall that we have to be sure to alternate signs. So we have minus one. And now we're going to <clears throat> eliminate the first column and the entirety of the second row. So please visualize eliminating those. And then we have the terms of a three by three matrix. Even if there's a little bit of a gap, one, zero, one, one, X, one, zero, one, X. So that's going to be what's multiplied by the minus one coefficient. One, zero, one, now one, X, one, and zero, one, X. Our next coefficient would be a zero, but since zero times anything is zero, that works out nicely for us. But we have to be careful to be consistent in using our system of alternating signs. So we have plus x minus one plus zero, but that tells us that the coefficient in this case is going to be a minus one. So we have minus one as our coefficient. And what will the three by three determinant look like that it multiplies? Well, if we eliminate that row and we eliminate the other column, we see the exact three by three determinant that we need. One, zero, one, X, one, zero, one, X, one. So let's write that down. And recall that we continue to set this equal to zero. Next, we have to break down this expression because we have a series of three by three determinants that we cannot evaluate directly. So we're gonna also have to expand those by minors. So notice here that the coefficient in front is an X. And we proceed to evaluate the three by three determinant by minors. So we notice that the first coefficient is going to be X and it leaves a two by two determinant that's multiplied by it. And the appropriate two by two determinant we get by eliminating the first column and the first row. So we see X one, one X. What is our second coefficient? Well, starting at X, we go down to one and since we have to alternate signs, it's going to be a minus one. And the determinant that we get by eliminating the first column and the second row is going to be one, zero, one X. And our third coefficient would be a plus zero, but since anything multiplied by zero is zero, we can stop at that point. So this gives us the further simplification of the first blue term here. So now let's evaluate the second term that we had previously written in purple. So again, we, the coefficient is going to be a minus one. So we'll put a minus one in front here. And then what was the formerly the three by three matrix? Uh, determinant of the three by three matrix, we're gonna write inside the brackets. What is our first coefficient here? Our first coefficient is going to be a one. Again, we leave off the first row and the first column. So that gives us one times X one, one X. What is our second coefficient going to be? Well, we notice that coming down from here, we have a one. So we alternate signs, so that gives us a minus one. And the appropriate two by two determinant we get by getting rid of the second row and the first column is zero, one, one X. And that evaluates completely the term in purple because our third coefficient would be a zero and we can simply ignore that because anything multiplied by zero is zero. Now to evaluate the expression in orange, we're gonna use a simplification here. So again, we have the one in front and we're gonna put 
our simplification of the 3 by 3 determinant inside brackets. What we're going to do is something slightly different here. We're going to start in the upper left hand corner and have our first coefficient be this one. So this is going to work exactly the way we've done before. We eliminate the first column, first row, and that leaves the determinant 1, 0, x1. Let's multiply it by 1. But now we're going to do something slightly different. We're allowed to proceed along the first column, but we could also proceed for our coefficients along the first row. And we notice that if we go along the first row, the second coefficient is a zero. And anything multiplied by zero is zero, so this saves us some work. So by proceeding along the top here, our first coefficient is one, our second coefficient is minus zero, that's still zero, and then our third coefficient is plus one. So now, the appropriate 2 by 2 determinant we get by removing this column and this row. So that gives us x11x one, one x as the matrix that's multiplying our coefficient. So we have x1. And this entire expression is equal to 0. Now we can continue at this point because all of the uh, determinants that we have are two by two determinants. So we can evaluate them directly. So our initial coefficient is x here. I have x times x squared minus one. So I have x times x squared minus one. Minus one times x minus one times zero, which is zero. So this gives us a minus x for the evaluation of this term. Next we have minus, one. I have one times x times x minus one times one. So that's x squared minus one. Minus zero times x is zero minus one times one. So that gives me minus a minus one there. And then last, for the expression in orange, I have minus one times one times one minus zero. This gives me simply a positive one plus one times x times x minus one times one. So this is another x squared minus one. And this is all equal to zero. In our next step, we're simply going to combine terms here. So uh, we have x in front. x times x squared is x cubed. x minus 1 is minus x. And then we have another minus x. Here we have x squared minus 1 minus a minus 1, which simply gives us x squared. Then for the final term, we have one plus x squared minus one, which again is another x squared. If we combine all these terms, first we multiply x times x cubed minus two x, so we get x to the fourth minus two x squared minus x squared minus x squared equals zero. And then we we're able to simplify this down to x to the fourth minus 4x squared equals zero. We're able to simplify that 4 by 4 determinant equation down to x to the fourth minus 4x squared equals zero and What's nice about this particular equation is that we can factor it easily on site. First, we can factor out an x squared. So it gives us x squared times x squared minus 4 equals 0. So we recognize immediately that we have x squared equals 0 and x squared equals 4. So we're able to break this quartic equation down into a series of two quadratics. This is obvious that the roots here are 
zero twice. And then to solve x squared equals four, tells us that x is equal to your plus two or minus two. So we have four roots, but one of those is doubly degenerate. Now we can use our previous procedure to convert from the roots immediately to the energies. And we'll notice that the highest energy is going to be alpha minus two beta, because remember beta is a negative number. Then we have two cases where the energy is equal to alpha, and then the ground state for our cyclobutadiene system is going to be alpha plus two beta. And we can make a quick sketch of the energy levels. So we have a non-degenerate ground state, which is A plus two beta. We have doubly degenerate alpha, and then the high energy state is going to be alpha minus two beta. We'd also notice that in this case, if we have a neutral cyclobutadiene, that we have the number of uh, pi electrons is actually equal to 4n, where n is equal to 1. So in cases where we have exactly 4n pi electrons, we have a situation which we call anti-aromaticity. So whereas 4n plus 2 pi electrons gives us an especially stable aromatic system, when we have 4n pi electrons, we have a unstable anti-aromatic system. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.